chatting with the two old friends. Yeah, I'm with the. Yeah, So shukram all of that we all have gathered here. So we are preparing for Sargira. How are you all preparing for Sargira? Any special preparation are you guys doing? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ali Allah madad farma. So Alhamdulillah, we are about to, this week we will have Sargira of Imam. And in accordance with that, I have a beautiful farman to share with you in advance, especially with you all. Salvat Bani, Allahumma Salli Allah, Muhammadin Bali Muhammad. I would like my Jamaat to think what is the meaning of a birthday in an individual's life and what is the meaning of a birthday in Imam's life. What can a Jamaat give to Imam on his birthday and what would really make him happy? And after all, this in an individual's life and Imam's life should and must be a day of happiness. Jamaat can give me one happiness and that is that they should be united that they should be regular in all Jamaat work and that they should live in the best tradition of my spiritual children. 12-9-1964 Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Beautiful Farman of Imam where Imam is asking us, what is the difference between the birthday of any individual and of an imam so you know if we our parents or even ourselves how much preparation do we put in for celebration of birthday how long how many days we start planning buying things inviting people and doing so much of planning and investment of time thoughts energy money have we done that for imam's birthday when did we start preparation of imam's birthday Something to reflect on. And Imam does say very clearly that it should be the day we should all be joyous and happy. How do we plan for that happiness? What time do I need to leave work so I can make it Jamaat Khana on time? Good. What am I going to wear? Is that all? How are we celebrating? Now, when we say we are happy and joyous, so celebration, does it, does it mean that we are going to eat a meal with Jamaat and play probably Dandia? Is that all? This is all physical. And we are not physical being. When we read, Imam says, be united and be regular in all Jamaat work, immediately we jump into physical khidmat of Jamaat. All the khidmat, we have to be first in line to give khidmat. All physical. Are we only in physical being? When we look at ourselves as human, physical, our body, soul, and then intellect. The highest most is intellect. How about getting happy intellectually, which trickles down to our soul and our body? How about serving Imam intellectually, which trickles down physically, spiritually? Have you ever thought like that? Have we invested our time and prepare ourselves to truly celebrate Imam's birthday and give him the gift? When Imam says be united, very humbly, we will all agree that we are not united in our family. Why? Because we have so many differences. We have so many disagreements. Same applies to Jamaat. Are we able to see beyond these differences and disagreements? If not, then we are stuck at the physical level. We will only be able to please Imam if we are united. 
and being able to see the soul of everyone. The true happiness will come in our being when we are truly able to see the souls of every individual, our families, our jamaat, because that is the true, that is the truth, that is the way Imam wants us to be walking on the path, see the soul of each other. How are we able to become that capable of seeing the soul so we can celebrate Imam's birthday at the level of soul and intellect? And we can be united and we can follow Imam's Farman the way Imam wants us to. It can only happen when the topmost level of our beings, we are all adults, we are grown, our brain is grown. But it is the intellectual level when we really get connected, open up our mind and learn the knowledge at level of intellect that will change our practices spiritually and physically. Meaning we are all desiring to go above the physical being, above the physical religion. So whatever we do, whatever preparation we have done, if it is only limited to physical, then we are still following the physical deen, which Imam does not want us to. So we do need to reflect on this Farman very critically and prepare ourselves because we still have a day, two days to be celebrating Imam Salgira with in congregation. But a moment in Salik starts planning and preparing for a long time because it is the day when the king of the both world will sit on the throne. And when the king is happy and he's sitting on the throne, what does he do? He blesses, he blesses. For his blessing to be received in our being, are we ready and open? And those worthy members who, has, who have done something, those who have done something, they can be forward and receive all the blessings which Imam bestows. We are physically alive, we are physically successful, we are smart people and we are living very good life. So is it only that we seek physical blessings? What blessing is he going to give it to us? Is he going to start with physical or he's going to start there? If he gives that level of blessing, which is the truth, he will. Are we ready at that level to receive at that level? Are we open to receive those blessings? If we are not, our minds are only limited to physical sicknesses and physical problems and physical issues. That is given at default level. Imam being the Imam, he sits on his Gadi, being the Imam of the whole humanity. This planet would not survive if Imam is not there. When Imam is born, this planet becomes happy. And we are the Ashraful Makhlukat. How happy we should be those who are smiles. So Imam is going to bestow his blessings at physical level on default basis. Meaning, whoever is human will be blessed by Imam's Salgya at a physical level. But then those who are in Bayat of Imam being smileys, are we only seeking physical blessings? That's the question we need to ask and we need to prepare ourselves to be at that level of like being a recipient, being at that level that we receive it all. When we think of be regular in all Jamaat work, it is all physical khidmat. When we see best tradition, it is all rites and rituals. This is all physical. What is beyond physical? That is something we need to reflect and think and prepare ourselves. So we receive all the blessings Imam is showering upon us. Ameen. All right. So let us start with our session today. We are under Jamaat Khana's Shanasi course, Recognition of Jamaat Khana. And today, first, we are going to talk about Ghat Pardua. And then we will talk about Giriya Uzari Ji Tasbi.
Now, Ghatpat Dua, we do know that we have three Dua we say. First is Sthapar, second is Uthapar, and third is Kayam Karanji Dua. These are three Dua which we say. So, in first Dua, which is Sthaparanji Dua, we Ghatpat Sthaparanji Lamiya. So, the word Sthapar actually means to spread, to initiate, to start, to begin. And we seek dua that we are starting the ghat part. Ghat part referring to the abhishafa, setting up of the part so we all can bring abhishafa. So we have understood what abhishafa is and how symbolically it is actually about hududi deen talima. Behind the whole ritual, it is actually about true knowledge and hududi deen. When we initiate that, we say ghat part. We start ghat part. So the word gut actually is from gut, gut jama, and gut is in congregation, and part is the part we have. So um, somehow we say gut part or gut part. So we all understand gut is the jamaat, and part is the part we kind of spread the whole abhishafa setup, and we seek dua. And the first one when we are spreading, we actually start with surah fatiha. Why Surah Fatiha? Why not other Surah? Number one, we need to realize that we read, we study Quran. We say Quranic words, which is Surah Fatiha. So we all know Quran and we realize the importance of Quran because without reciting that chapter from the Quran, we cannot even start our Abhay Shafa ceremony. Who are the followers of Quran? Who has kept the Quran with them? Smileys. Because smileys follow the Quran with Imam's light. We are the blessed ones. We are the Truly chosen mominings of Imam Zaman. So, Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha being the mother of the Quran. Surah Fatiha is the mother of the Quran. And there's a hadith of uh, Prophet Muhammad that if you want to recite the whole Quran, you can by just saying the Surah Fatiha three times. There were at that time mominings who used to read the whole Quran. In a day, they cite from one to end all Quran in a day, and that was their regular etakaf, regular practice. But when they went to battle, they couldn't do that, so they came to Prophet Muhammad and said, "How do we complete our intention? Because there's no time in battle." So he said, "If you were to read Surah Fatiha three times, it will be as if you have read the whole Quran." And that's how those who intended to read the whole Quran in a day, they would say. Surah Fatiha three times a day. And look at Imam's mercy. We say dua three times and we say three times Surah Fatiha. Then in Ghatpat dua, those who attend morning, they hear additional Surah Fatiha. So Surah Fatiha is the mother of the book. And we do know that the Quran starts with the letter B. And in Urdu, in Arabic, there's a dot underneath the alphabet B. And Mawla Ali has said, I am that dot under the alphabet B, meaning the Quran is began with Mawla. It is only smileys who have Iman on Imam, and we begin our prayers with his name, his duashes. So truly it is the smileys who are following the talimat of the Quran. Now, why do we say Surah Fatiha here? For us, those who do not understand the meaning of the Surah Fatiha, it is not about lip service, saying by mouth Surah Fatiha and nothing happens intellectually, then we are not understanding it. Without understanding, the intention is not fulfilled. We cannot get the benefit of reading the whole Quran if you don't understand Surah Fatiha. So I hope you can imagine to understand Surah Fatiha, one has to know the whole Quran. Then only they'll understand Surah Fatiha because secrets of Imams are hidden in the whole Quran and they're summarized in Surah Fatiha. And we cannot take shortcut and just understand the summary and get the benefit of reading the whole Quran. If it were to be possible, a child who is born, he would say, I don't want to go to school, make me a medical physician or doctor or make me an engineer. It cannot happen. There's no shortcut. One has to go through the process. So Surah Fatiha, we recite being the mother of the Quran, 
with the iman in our heart that we believe in imam we start we initiate sthapan ji dua and then we say dua ghat paath sthapan ji venti to ji huzur mein kabool karnu maulana shah karim husain hazim imam allahumma salli ala muhammad it is our venti it is our request our munajat our griya uzari that we say this dua what what does this dua mean now we are initiating aave shafa ghatpat you know what we are saying that we are going to spread this aave shafa pat and we are going to drink water which we now understand is true knowledge and it is showing us symbolically the process of hudud e din how hudud e din exist in the world of religion and they give us talimat ya maula we do supplication in your huzur that help us get the understanding so we can get close to your nur shah karim al husain hazim how beautiful it is if we had understood just sthapan ji dua we would be the lovers of quran we would know the concepts hidden behind hudud e din concepts which are taught in true knowledge we would be seekers of that so shukr maula we are seekers there is no regret it's only happiness with imam shukran lillah walhamdulillah second one is dua uthapan ji gat paat uthapan ji dua so again dua dio gat paat uthapan ji ala milya and we say second part of dua as prayers so i've just taken the translation O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, from Thee is my help, and upon Thee is my reliance. Allahumma ya Maulana min ka madadi, wo ilai ka maut madi. Iya ka na badu, the only, the alone we worship. Wo iya ka na stain, and we seek support from You. Ya Ali, bilut fi ka drikni. O oh Ali, help me with Your kindness. there is no deity except allah muhammad is the messenger of allah and ali is the master of the believers we do give our allegiance we do understand that we are believers of allah and his prophet prophet muhammad who brought the quran and ali being the amirul mu'mini he is the master of the all believers so we give our allegiance to imam and we understand that imam zahurat happened through natif prophet muhammad who brought the quran and allah has sent them so we were never away from these talimat and this belief in current present time our lord is shah karim husain present in the living imam the same noor the same noor which allah had sent on the first day in adam by making him his janashi today the same noor is in shakari musain so we accept all the pagambers all the natiks the talimat of our natikan including the quran which is the last prophet's book and current and living imam shakari musain it is only the smiley mu'minins who are connected with allah's noor from the day one till today you may not be living physical life but in the form of our batin our soul our light we are connected from the day one gat paat uthapan ji venti to ji huzur mein kabool karnu maulana shah karim husain hazim so what we are saying what venti we are saying is that maula accept our prayers because we depend on you maula we seek support from only you our commitment is with you our allegiance is with you and we do accept you the pagambers and allah but that noor currently is present in imam and we study quran because it's a book of pro pagambar but we seek not to learn arabic language as per se or read arabic no we are seekers of tawil which is given to us by the imam of the time because that's the imam function imam is the mawil e quran he is the teacher of the Qurani tawilat to us. He does not teach us Arabic, but he gives us the tawili knowledge. He finds ways and means for us to, for us we can learn. 
So here we also understand one of the very important concept of Islam that Allah's habit doesn't change. Allah's habit does not change. Allah always sends a guide. In any point in time human is on this planet, they will have a guide. And then there's another concept which is hidden behind this dua, which is Uthaparanji dua. We first enfolded the, the tradition, the ritual of uh, Abe Shafa. It's like initiating, spreading this ritual of setting up Abe Shafa. So we all can bring that niyas, symbolically understand its true knowledge, and if we are getting through Hudud e Deen. But then a time comes when we say Uthaparanji dua, we fold it. There are two names of Allah, which are Al Kabiz and Al Basit. Basit means to spread, to start, to unfold. Kabiz means to again fold it back, wrap it up. So these beautiful ritual of ours also teaches us the concept of folding and unfolding, which is the habit of Allah. And the third dua is Gatpat Kayam Karanji dua. In this, again, we say prayers, prayers from our fifth part of dua. O oh, Imam of the time, O oh, our Lord, thou art my strength and you are my support. You are my himmat, you are my taqat and you are my support. I only rely on you, Mawla. O present, O living, O Shah Karim Husseini Haz Imam, you are the true manifest Imam. Hakiki Imam, manifest Imam is only Shah Karim. Imam e Barhak is Shah Karim. There are very many Imam in today's time. Employed uh, members in mosque are Imams too. And their job is to take care of the mosque and give azan. They're Imams too. And we call our Imam as Imam Imam. What is the difference? He is the true Imam. Imam Barhak. So I hope you understand. When we say true knowledge, knowledge is a lot. Everyone is giving knowledge. We should be intellectually able to pick up what is true knowledge. So Imams are very many in today's time, very many, countless. But who is the Imam Barhak? That is what we are talking about. We are believers of Imam Barhak. And then in this uh, Kaim Karanji Dua, we also say Tasbi, Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad. Why? Why don't we say Ya Musa, Ya Harun? Why do we say Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad? Again, it is drawing our attention to the current cycles. We are in, we believe cycles. We believe in cycles. And this is the current cycle of Ya Muhammad and Ya Ali. And we normally say Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali. Why? It is again talking about cycle which is continuous. On and on and on and on. But currently we are in the cycle of Ya Ali and Ya Muhammad. We are being reminded of Ya Muhammad. We are being reminded what Muhammad gave to us, which is Quran. And then we are reminded of Ali who is with us, who gives us Ismail Azam and the Tavi. So Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad. It is Allah's habit that the cycles are there and they are continuously going on. In this dua, we are saying Kayam Karanji, meaning everlasting, meaning the Noor is ever present. Does not matter which cycle we are talking about. So these are all huge concepts, actually, very huge concepts. But you know, Peer, our Peer has so beautifully given us the Talimat of Quran, but we have never studied Quran to be able to understand this Talimat. And we've been going this direction and that direction. But in reality, all what you see are Peer's Ginans and Peer's Talimat, it is all actually about Quran. We need the knowledge of the Quran to understand. So here, the concept of Nurun Allah Nur. The Nur will always be present. Without Imam, this planet cannot be. 
Nur is everlasting, it's always kind. So with dua, with tasbi, what do we say? Dua ghatpaat kaim karan ji toji huzoor me kabool karnu maulana shah karima se neha ji maa. You know, we say that we know we, that this is kaim, this will always remain, this is always present, everlasting. When we say that, you know, we don't say anything without understanding. Children do that. And we are no more children, so we are learning. We are growing. We say that we accept, we understand that it is cycles we are talking about, and it will remain, the new will remain. And we, Mola, pray in your huzur to accept all what we are doing through this ritual of Abhi Shafa. Then we say, Duan This The reason I wrote, because pronunciation is so wrong and we don't understand the words. It is Dua Niyat Ki Khair Kar. Dua Niyat. Niyat means intention, Dua means prayers. So we are saying whatever Dua we did, whatever intention we have, because intentions are different. For some, it is only the intention of physical spreading of the part and doing it properly so Jamaat can enjoy. It is physical seva. I'm happy to give that. That is the need. Then there are some who are drinking Abhi Shifa saying, well, I understand the concept of cycles. I understand who do the deen. I understand that I'm seeking true knowledge by drinking this niyaz. So whatever is the niyat, dua niyat ki khair. The word khair means the word literal meaning would be nice, being uh, good. So whatever good intentions and good prayers we have done, Mola too, uh, Mola, you accept it, khair kar. And then, ilahi tu khair kar. Again, we are just saying ilahi, the divine, the Lord, please accept our prayers, all good wishes, good prayers, good intention, accept in your huzur. Then we are saying akebat jo khair kar. The word akebat means end time. It means the day of judgment. It means kiamat. That Mola, akebat jo khair kar. By all these intentions and dua, whatever we are doing, please make us successful. Make us, help us make you proud at the day of judgment. Akebat jo khair kar. We are seeking care of the akebat time. And then, Kher Karanji Venti, again, Mala, all this dua, all these wishes we have in front of you, good wishes, please accept this supplication in your husu. Nur Malana Shah Karimul Saini Hazima. So I hope that it is so beautiful, so I mean, amazing to realize that in such a small ritual we do, there are huge concepts hidden behind these dua. Then let's talk about Giriya Zari Ji Tasbi. Giriya Zari Ji Tasbi, the word Giriya Zari means to weep in intensely. Giriya Zari means to weep intensely, to shed tears, to cry, Zaro Qatar Rona. And we are told to do Giryao Zari Ji Tasbi twice a day. And we do that morning and evening. Question is, why does Imam wants us to cry? We just read Imam's Farman that he wants us to be happy and celebrating, but on that day of celebration, we will have Giryao Zari Ji Tasbi. And the word Giryao Zari means to shed tears. All the makeup will go bad if we are shedding tears. But that is an expectation. That is what it means. Giryao Zari Ji Tasbi. We are expected to shed tears. Why? Let us tackle all these questions, okay? Then we do this Tasbi while standing up. We say our dua sitting down. Why do we need to stand up? Question. Why do we say twice? Can we do more than that? Or it is limited to twice? What is the benefit? Why do we have to shed tears? All these questions we are going to get the answers today. So first question, why do we need to shed tears? 
you know, sometimes in class people say, oh, I was emotional. I said, no, we were not emotional because we are talking about Imam, praising Imam. You did Giriya Uzari. That is what we are talking about today, Giriya Uzari. So Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah's beautiful Farman, Imam has given us Hidayat when not to cry, when not to weep. And this Farman is of Zanzibar, 9th September, 1899. Please recite the Salvat, Allahumma salli ala It is all right if you earn money by hard work, but do not attach your heart with it. Do not get delighted if you earn a lot of money. If you lose your hard earned money, don't be dejected, don't be sad. Do not feel sorrow. Do not be delighted when you accumulate money. If someone's son dies, he should not grieve. Now this is very, very harsh for man because we weep when we lose our money, our belongings. Money is all earning. It could be physical money, earning. It could be our health. It could be loss of anything. Imam says, do not cry. And that was not enough. Imam says, if your son's son dies. Now we are parents here. Those who are parents, they know how much they love their children. And those who are children, they know how much their parents love them. Loss of a child, Imam says, do not grieve, do not weep, do not cry. Ya Mola, then why did you give us tears? What was the benefit? What was the reason of giving us tears? So if we are shedding tears, <clears throat> when we lose something, when we lose our family member, our child, or we lose our resources, our health, or anything, and if we cry, we are directly in na farman bradari. We are directly in na farman bradari. So let us see. When a momin cries, again, Imam Sulman. Please recite the Salat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Farman made by Malana Sultan Muhammad Shah. The believer does not fear with the sword or any other weapon, even with death. Death is the cheerful day for the believer because it is the day of relieving from the prison of the body. One whose faith is profound, he fears death. One who has committed the works of sin or disobedience, he fears that he would go to hell after death. His faith is not respectable. He fears due to his evil work. The believers who flourished in the past had endured the strokes of the sword and took many hardships and troubles, but they never feared. Farman number 134, Zanzibar, 17 September 1905. Please recite the Salat Allahumma Allah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So Momin does not fear any sword. Now, right now we are not in battle. We are not dealing with any war, shukhar mola. But when Imam gives example, it has to be applicable every time. But the point here today we need to focus on is that we don't fear death. Death is a cheerful day for the believer. Those whose Iman is profane, meaning worldly, when they, people have worldly faith, they will fear that. Because they don't know what is after death, what does that mean? They don't know. They will fear that. And Imam is saying that those who are worldly, of course, their amal nama would be such that they are not going to be united with Imam's nur because worldly deeds are not going to be elevated. And then Imam says, whatever hardships and troubles we have, moment do not fear it. Imam says, imagine a child who has lost his mother and how that child would cry for his mother. That is how you should cry for the didar of the Imam. So when does Momin cry? It was to seek Imam's didar. And Imam gives us example 
of a child who loses his mother, how would a child cry? He will not be pleased by anything because he's looking for mother. That is how we should cry. This Farman what we just studied, it is in context. We should not be crying if you are faced with the worldly troubles or we are faced with the death. Imam says, Mala Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, when you prostrate, like when we go in sajda, Imam says that, say dua, that Mala, help us get to Asal Makan. And then Imam says, be like the lost child who has been discharged from his mother. He cries, when will I get back to my mother? You also become alive. You also become alive. And that farman is, of Dar es Salaam, 29 September 1899. So Imam is telling us that we should be crying like a child who has lost his mother. We should become, you should become alive. We are expected to become alive, meaning of a, like a child who has lost his mother. So we, a mom'in cries at that time when he is in complete realization that how we are detached from, uh, we are away from his life, from his nur. We need to be one with his light and his nur. So that was the answer to the question, when does woman, woman weeps? Woman only cries when he or she realizes that they are not in the dar of the imam. They do not fear that. They do not cry when they are faced with death. They do not cry when they are faced with any kind of hardships and troubles. They do cry when they realize that they are away from their mother. Imam is a man. Now, the next question, why do we stand up during Giri Auzari? Why can we sitting down do Giri Auzari? There's a concept of Kasrini. Kasrini means Riyazat, practice. We are expected to really do this riyazat, take this hardship upon us to seek imam's closeness. Without hardship, it's not possible because everybody follows physical deen. Those who are seekers of higher fruit, they do need to do more because everyone, everyone is saying dua, ibadat, dasom, chandrat ki madlas, they're doing that. If we want more from our ibadat, what more we are doing? Do understand that thing. It means riyazat. And this is the talimat of Maula Ali from kalam e Maula. Maula Ali says, Rab kaar tu kasri kare, to neki kya sahi hove tere dil. To iman tera hove changa, aur na hove kuch iman mein khalal. Iman jo sudha, to kasri kar. Karar Rasul or Ale Rasul. Enu Karar Jo Kasri Kare To Shifayat Kare To Shifayat Karenge Zohra Batul. Ene Karne Jo Tu Kasri Kare To Shifayat Karenge Zohra Batul. So Rab Karne, for the sake of our Lord, our Rab, Palne Wala, if we were to do Riyazat, if we'll undergo physical mortification, then you will truly have the strength of purity in your heart. Then your faith will be joyous, meaning what? Unshakable. There will be no shortcoming in your iman. If your faith is real, then undergo physical mortification, meaning kasri, for the sake of the messenger and his progeny, our iman. If for them you undergo, do kasrini, do riyazat, then Bibi Fatima to Zohra will intercede for you. Why Bibi Fatima to Zohra? Just on the side, we need to understand that. Because Bibi Fatima is called, she is the lady of the heaven. We all want to enter in the heaven, in Maula Ali. She is the daroga, she is standing on the gate. Who can enter? In Imam's Noor, she will do sifarish for us. She will intercede for us that no, no, let them enter. They did, they did work hard. They do, they did riyaz. 
how beautiful it is. So why do we stand up again symbolically? We cannot be sitting down comfortably. We have to take effort and stand up. But for Momin and Salik, the Salik, the one who walks further, this is symbol to understand, do more. And we stand up and do Giriya Hazari Ji Tasbi. Why twice a day? Because it is the hukum of Allah in Quran. Chapter 3 by 41 says, Lord, much and exalt in the evening and in the morning. So we have to remember, we have to praise, we have to exalt him two times a day, morning and evening. Smiley Jamaat does do that, exactly according to the hukum of the Quran. Now, second verse has a little bit more in it. So let's study that. Allah says in chapter 18, verse 28, and keep yourself patient, sabar meno, with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening. Why sabar? If I'm shedding tears and I'm in trouble and I'm seeking your help, Mola, why do I need to be patient? If I'm shedding tears and I'm seeking your noor, I've done my ibadat, I've prayed my dasun, why still I haven't seen my noor, Mola? Hukum is be patient. Continue to do law, evening and morning ibadat with all those who seek, but stay patient. What are we seeking? Seeking his didha. Exactly what Imam has given to us in his Farman. Seek your mother, seek his didah. Quran is saying the same thing. Imam is teaching us the Quran. And let not your eyes pass beyond them. Beyond is what? Desiring adornments of the worldly life. Dunya ki khayish nahi karni hai. Dunya is given to Mu'minin on default as anyone else. Do not obey one whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance and who follow his desire and whose affairs are ever in neglect. Those who are mominin, they always stay in remembrance. Those who don't automatically come out of the category of the mominin. And those who are out of the category of mominin, they will seek worldly things. They will have desires of the worldly things. Momin and Salik's desire would be to kill the nafs Ammara. That is the battle we are in. That is the jihad we are doing. We do not want to be those who are in neglect. And that is why we do Giriya Zari Ji Tasbi, morning and evening, staying patient. We seek, we do Riyazat, victory given to us or not, it is in hands of his. Struggle is man's duty. What are the benefit of true Giriya Zari? Why did I use the word true? Because Giriya Zari is done by the whole Jamaat. But do we see anyone shedding tears? Do they understand that Giriya Zari Tazbi means to shed tears? So what are the benefits? Quran says in chapter 17, verse 109, and they fall down on their faces, weeping, and it adds to their humility. When we do Giriya Uzari, when we shed tears, automatically we will become ajiz, we will become humble. And that is the single most extremely important criteria for success in Bethul Khaya. Imam says, sit in humility. We can never learn humility when we are not able to shed tears. This is a very difficult practice. It can only come when we truly believe we are nothing. Imam is everything. We are nothing. Every pride, every ego, every ana, let it go. We are nothing. No matter who we are in physical world, doctor, engineer, or amaldar in Imam's huzur, we are no one. Take any example. We are no one. Then only we will have humility. Then only we will have success in Ibadah. Do you see how it is all related? Then another verse, chapter 19, verse 58 says, those were the ones upon whom Allah bestowed favor from among the prophets and the descendants of Adam and of those we carried with Noah and of descendants of Ibrahim and Israel and of those whom we guided and chose. 
When the verses of the most merciful were recited to them, they fell in prostration and weeping. So the first part of the verse actually is talking about all the natikan of the Allah, who Allah sent, and the imama, because it is the same progeny. If you want to understand this verse better, study chapter 3, verse 33. Ayah istafa, the verse of chosen. All these individuals were chosen. They and their families were chosen. Those who want to be in the kishti and nijad, who is that kishti and nijad? Who is that boat of salvation today? Shakari. Because he is from that chosen family who are guided and who are chosen. When the verses of the most merciful were recited to them, they fell in prostration and weeping. Actually, this ayat is about Maulali. This was habit of Maulali. Whenever the Quran was recited, when it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, Maula Ali would immediately go into sajda and he would be shedding tears in Giriya Uzari. Why? Because he understood what was said in the Quran. He, was, he is the Malik of the Tavi. He is the teacher of the Tavi. He understood. Meaning, number one, if we will understand the meaning of what we are studying, what we are reading, what we are saying in our rituals and in our classes, we will automatically shed tears because it will touch our hearts. When our hearts are touched and we shed tears, we will become humble. If we are humble, we will be successful in Baitul Kya. That is the benefit of the Giri Avzari. Do we not want success in our Ibadat? Is it not the reason we are here? That is the benefit. Symbolically, this teaching of humility is taught to us practically morning and evening in Giri Avzari Jitasvi. This is the practice which our Imam had. Do we not want to do that practice which Imam did? Do we not want to walk on the path of Imam's guidance? Imam practically demonstrated that to us, that how we should be doing Giri Avzari. So those who listen to ilm classes and they shed tears, their hearts are touched. Mubarakbar. The question here is, when we understand the benefit, then Momin is Saliki, will they limit the Giriya Uzari twice a day? Is it only that we hear the name of our Lord twice a day? Do we not study in our own time? Do we not remember him all the time? A moment is salik. Their practice would be to stay giryan all the time. In their heart, they are constantly shedding tears, seeking Imam's didar. And that's how they will stay in remembrance. Remember, Jamaat Khana is like a classroom. Students, they go uh, attend a class. But those who are successful, after the class, they do pre-reading, post-reading, and they do in-depth study to understand briefly what concepts were taught in the class. That's exactly what we are doing right now. This is not that classroom. This is like group study among friends to learn the deeper meaning. Therefore, we are in remembrance. Therefore, we should be doing giriyas in our heart that we are seeking you, Mola. Let's see what our peers are saying to us. Eji Aash Tamari Sri Ho Kayam Asami Sahib Chinta Kiji Yasha Sabgati Shah Ke Khadi Re Umayo Shah Raj Riki Sar Ghar Bejo. O ever living Lord, we cherish our hopes in you. So keep us in your care and thoughts. O Lord, all Jamaat stands before you in supplication. O Lord, favor the believers with the spiritual kingdom because we cannot become a physical president. Rikhi Sar, Raj. Raj means to give kingdomship. Which kingdomship? Spiritual kingdom. We all are seeking to become king. 
do we know that imams uh, imam the title for imam is shahanshah not padshah shahanshah he is the emperor emperor is the one who makes kings so we are seeking our shahanshah to make us king and where the king's seat would be in his darbar close to him and p is telling us that that is the benefit of the giriya uzari he is teaching us by actually saying a dua in imam zuzur he is saying the jamaat is standing before you please bless those believers who are imani who are pakka imani with the kingdom which kingdom we are seeking spiritual kingdom our heart we can make it a throne for imam make it so pure and ready when imam sits do you think he's not going to bless us he's going to say to us i make you king you are now the badshah how why we are one with the shahanshah now we are not ordinary people we are the king how beautiful talimat our peers have given us and we have not paid attention the way it is ought to be paid e ji aash karine ya ali hu tere daru pe now this is individual giriyazari right kar jodi ne em mangu yasha de jo didar tusi mahavar data hum tere charan lago ya ali i stand at your door with hope i crave i pray i supplicate o mola bless me with your didar o the exalted bestower i fall prostrate at your feet we are the ones that is our tradition that we touch and kiss the feet of imam historically jamaat used to do that kiss the feet of imam i fall prostrate at your feet mola we seek your didar now why we read in quran also that molali's habit was to go into prostration and this ginan it seems if you were to really look at it he is saying that i stand in front of you meaning standing holding hands in front of imam and then suddenly falling down to the feet to prostrate meaning we are indicated we are taught about the importance of sajda prostration you know there's a beautiful verse one of my favorite verse in quran 96 by 19 which says wasjud waqtarib prostrate and come near so if we really seek closeness to our imam we just have to go into sajda and be near why sajda is so important this is my face this is my identity when i put my face on the earth what do i say i am no one mola i'm just like this soil underneath me earth and underneath me one with the earth i am no one you are everyone you are everything that is the nishani of humility wasjud waqtari sajda kar aur kareeb aaja so to summarize today we are still in the course of jamaat khana shanasi because we are understanding the rituals we do in jamaat khana and today we talked about ghat paat dua in great detail talking about so many concepts which are hidden in that ritual and then we talked about giriya zari ji tasbi again discussing in detail so we understand what we are doing so i'll stop here friends forgive me for my shortcomings if you like anything in this session it is all due to imam's mercy it is all due to him Jinnamin Sahib. Shalom Allah, shukran Allah, alhamdulillah, shukran Allah, alhamdulillah. Friends, if you have any questions, you can come forward. You can unmute and ask questions or comments. I understand it is a lot to absorb. it's like kind of overwhelming because you almost want to go back and take this and experience cut part with this knowledge it's that deep and unfortunately i missed last week when you talked about the nyas ceremony i believe right 
and I would think that you would want to experience all of it. So I feel like I need to sit with this content before I can say anything other than it's overwhelming in a beautiful way. Any other friends, any other comments? It is very close to Salgira, so any comments related to that, you know, um, by listening to the lecture, you can always come forward with that too. Yes, Subeda I, I I have no words to describe how I feel inside, like awake me inside, there is an awake me. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, both of you. Shukar, shukar. Shukramala, Shukramala. It is all due to your desire and Imam's mercy. Shukramala, Shukramala. Any other friends, if any comments or any questions? Chikul Sarsar. Yeah, Ali, what is my mom? I don't know. 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 I don't I would say, Mejan, that we are waking up. When we have giryas are in our heart, meaning that our soul gets so happy, right? Our soul feels that joy. What we are listening to, our soul feels that joy and it expresses. Yes, I like your expression. You are saying it is your happy birthday, meaning that we are coming to life. We are being born, spiritually born. We are all physically born and we have lived ages, but it is about being born spiritually. Because if we are spiritually awake and alive, then only we can get to the next step of ugly life, life, intellectual life. Because it happens step by step, right? So when the soul is happy, it feels like we are alive, we are born today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, my ma. Thank you, my ma. Aap ka nevin saiba ka bhoot bhoot. Thank you, my ma. Shukramala. Normally, the way I say it, when you are beginning this journey, you start collecting pearls of knowledge, beads. And sometimes it will feel that these beads are disconnected. Each bead is separate and you are not able to see the whole picture. And that's normal. And you are desperate to see the whole picture. Be patient. Be patient. If you are in this advanced classes and you stay consistent, believe me that beads which we've been collecting will become a mala. It's like block pieces, block pieces we are collecting, it will become a picture. But you got to be patient because remember, our soul is so hungry, it does not want to wait. Though it is important to go step by step in learning these concepts, our soul may benefit much more than we realize. Intellectually, we may not know, but soul knows a lot more and benefit of that we will see in our ibadat, in our giriya uzari, automatically. Intellectually, it may take a little longer. And whenever you have this desperate desire, which I'm sure right now you feel that way, what you do is to pray, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, do giriya uzari. It will all come to you. It will all come to you because all the knowledge is there. It is for us. It is Imam's treasure for those who are seekers. And whatever Najis knows, I tell to my friends that it is all yours. But it is good idea to go step by step. So we all stay together, number one. And number two, there is no room left for any misconception or any indigestion. It is, that is why it is important to go step by step. But you can read, there's a lot of material, a lot of material. And we are trying to do book studies too for that simple reason that we all learn this. Shukramala, just have a, a beautiful comment. 
May Mullah bless you with more knowledge and may um, you keep sharing this wonderful knowledge with us, Ami. Also, um, bless everyone who worked behind the scenes to bring the wonderful session to us. May Mullah keep the global Jamaat under his wings Amen. and to the Mushkil Asan for everyone. Yali Madad. Yali Madad friends, Yali Madad. Sagira Mubarak. Thank you. 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 Thank you.